Welcome to the bees business or welcome back if you've been here before. Today we are off on another family adventure. If you're new around here, my name is Brittany, my husband's name is Brandon, and we have three children, Eli, Charlie, and Colin. And our goal is to go on family adventures as often as we can together. We really like to get outside, we also like to be frugal and go on adventures that are low or no cost. And today's trip is a no cost adventure. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to The Bee's Business. We would love to have you as part of our growing community. From New Jersey. You may have already gathered that today's adventure has something to do with hot air balloons. Today, we are visiting the Great Falls Balloon Festival. The mission of the Great Falls Balloon Festival is to provide a fundraising opportunities for local nonprofit organizations while celebrating the community and promoting the Lewiston Auburn area as a visitor destination. A little bit about this festival. It was established in 1992 by a group of business people, civic leader, and friends. The Great Falls Balloon Festival is a weekend long celebration featuring hot air balloons, food, and entertainment. With the support of local businesses, an army of volunteers, and the cooperative efforts of the cities of Lewiston and Auburn, the festival has gained a national reputation as a first-class event and is a destination for many visitors to the state of Maine. Based at Sennard Payne Memorial Park in Lewiston, with additional entertainment and food offerings at Festival Plaza in Auburn, the festival attracts approximately 100,000 visitors throughout the weekend. The Androscoggin River and Rocky Great Falls provide a picturesque setting for the dozens of balloons that visit each year, including some special shaped balloons. With free admission, hundreds of thousands of dollars raised by participating nonprofits and economic impact in excess of $2 million, it's easy to see why our community eagerly anticipates the festival each year. During the festival, the balloon launches are scheduled for 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. daily, weather permitting. But when the balloons aren't overhead, there's still plenty to do. Dozens of food booths offer everything from lime rickies to taco salad. There's a pancake breakfast that follows the morning launches. Craft and trade booths invite browsing. There's a children's area with games, a bounce house on face painting, and live entertainment on two different stages. Carnival rides, a parade, and various demonstrations and contests round out the weekend's events. Have you ever wanted to ride in a hot air balloon? This could be your chance to do just that. At all six launches, if the balloons are able to go up, balloon rides are offered. All balloon rides are free flying, which means they go where the wind takes them. The balloons range in size from two to 10 passengers, but whatever the size of your group, they will be sure to find a balloon to fit your needs. At the end of each balloon ride, there's a champagne toast to celebrate your adventure. The earlier you book, the better your selection. The cost is $250 per person, which you must prepay, and tickets are delivered before the first flight. Just at this year's balloon festival, I learned that hot air balloons are considered aircraft and are regulated by the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, just as fixed-wing aircraft are. Hot air balloon pilots must pass a yearly in-flight certification to maintain their license as a commercial pilot. The Great Falls Balloon Festival only invites pilots who have met these qualifications. The balloons themselves must also pass a yearly safety inspection, which includes testing the fabric of the balloon, the fuel system, integrity of the basket, burners, and all other related equipment before the balloon receives its annual airworthiness certificate to fly. Now, if you're as fascinated by hot air balloons as I am, you may be interested in exactly how they inflate. To inflate the balloon, pilots use inflation fans to fill the balloon with outside air. This process is called cold packing. When the balloon is inflated enough, the pilot uses the burners to heat the inside air to, approxi to approximately 100 degrees warmer than the outside temperature. This is when the balloon takes shape and is ready to fly on a new adventure. It is the heat inside the balloon that makes the balloon rise. If the outside air temperature is too high, the pilot would need to add more heat to the balloon to compensate. High heat can cause damage to the fabric of the balloon. This is why balloons rarely fly in the heat of the day. Hot air balloon pilots are always aware of the weather and the function of their equipment. The safety of the people in the basket is always a top priority for the pilots, and they have the final say in whether the conditions are right for them to fly. 
the Great Falls Balloon Festival boasts that the experience that the visitors get at this festival is rare in the ballooning world. At most festivals, spectators are not allowed in the area where balloons are launching. However, this up-close and personal venue also poses some challenges. The main launch site is small. Visiting balloons are huge. A new to me term is Balloon Meister. The Balloon Meister is responsible for calling the decision on whether the balloons will fly at any given launch time. So if the event is questionable due to the conditions, then the Balloon Meister may wait as long as they can in hopes of a turn for better weather. However, a launch decision may be delayed by up to an hour if weather conditions are changing. So ideally, the balloons would launch by 6.45 a.m. or p.m. Simard Payne Park in Lewiston is the main launch site, but additional launch sites may be added if needed. And the special balloons only fly in the mornings. In the evening, they will inflate and stay at the field to glow for the crowd. Stars come to shine when it's dark From so far away, show us where we are What makes the sun go to sleep every night And what's it dreaming of? I wonder Sky sometimes hides behind the clouds. Maybe it's just like me, 
a little bit scared of heights Why does the rain always keep on pouring down When it's grey outside It really makes me wonder
As you enjoy these aerial views of the balloons to close out this vlog, I'm going to share with you some answers to some commonly asked questions related to hot air balloons. What are hot air balloons made of? The bag or envelope is made of a reinforced fabric called ripstop nylon. Some balloons are made of Dacron. The material is very lightweight but very strong. The fabric is coated to prevent leaks. What are the baskets made of? The baskets are made from rattan or wicker. The material is lightweight and very durable. Each basket is individually woven by hand. How fast do they go? As fast or as slow as the wind. Since the balloon has no forward propulsion system, its speed is determined entirely by the speed of the wind. That is why balloon competitions are strictly for accuracy, not for speed. How high does it go? The balloons will fly from ground level to anywhere from tree level to a couple of thousand feet above ground level, depending on wind direction and speed. When is the best time to fly? Usually just after sunrise and one or two hours before sunset. This is the time of day when the winds are calmest and the air the most stable. How long can the balloon stay up? It depends. Normally, the balloon carries enough fuel to remain aloft for one to two hours, but factors like outside air temperature, the weight being carried in the basket, and weather conditions determine the duration of the flight. Pilots try to get in at least 45 minutes of air time each flight. What kind of fuel is used? Propane is kept in pressurized tanks in the basket. The balloon carries 30 to 40 gallons of liquid propane. It is carried under pressure through flexible hoses to the burner. When the valves are opened, the propane atomizes and is ignited by a pilot light in the burner. The flame may shoot out as much as 10 to 20 feet, making a loud whoosh. How do you get back? With the help of friends who drive a chase vehicle. The chase crew will follow the flight of the balloon, as well as existing roads allow, and they should be on hand to make their recovery when the balloon touches down. If you are going on a balloon ride, what should you wear? It is recommended that you wear casual clothing and comfortable shoes. Consider light layers of warm clothing so you can easily adjust to the temperature as the sun comes up. The coolest you will be is on the ground. Once you're in flight, the burners tend to keep the baskets nice and warm. For anyone interested, the Great Falls Balloon Festival also hosts a photo contest, and the goal of this contest is to take pictures while the festival is occurring and then submit them afterwards. Photos should be submitted on their website. They should be from the current year. There will be three categories judged, adult, which is 18 and up, youth, 18 and under, and professional. There's a limit of five entries per person. But dream 
everywhere mm -hmm. Maybe there is a star with your name One thing I know is that there should be There is no one who has a heart as pure No, not like yours What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed coming along with us for today's family travel adventure. One of my favorite things about putting these vlogs together about the trips that we take as a family is everything that I learn through the research that I do when I am creating the vlogs to produce for all of you to watch. I have gone to the Great Falls Bloom Festival almost every year of my life since it has been happening and remember it dates way back to 1992, but I have never known as much about it as I do now. From the research that I did and shared with you, I have learned a lot simply about hot air balloons themselves, as well as this specific festival here in Maine. Capturing the beauty of this festival is important to me for multiple reasons. I find this festival a little bit mesmerizing and beautiful, and I love sharing that with my own children, but also, I really enjoy creating content for those who maybe can't come to Maine and visit this festival in person, or for those who are considering traveling to Maine and are wondering what you might be able to do in this August time frame if you're in this area. So if the opportunity arises, I of course recommend that you visit the Great Falls Balloon Festival. I hope that you enjoyed the sights, the sounds, and all that there was to learn related to this event. Here's to looking forward to the next Great Falls Balloon Festival. Subscribe so you can become a member of the Bees Business. We would love to have you around here in our community. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and share it with anyone that you feel may also enjoy it. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye!